Well, hello, everyone. Well, it is my absolute pleasure and honor to have here Kapil Raj, who I have admired for so long because let me explain something to you guys. He is probably the most important person who has brought Vedic astrology to the public. His YouTube channel, he started so long ago. And I remember, Kapil, you had me on many years ago. And yeah. really, you did such a service for all of us in this field because you brought it to the public. People know what it is and people have learned from you for years. You brought all the great teachers on for years. You were in a learning mode. And now you're one of the great teachers because... Well, it's in your blood, too. Your family, your uncle was a Vedic astrologer. Yeah. And, hey, you're from India. You can pronounce everything correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Where I, I have a little struggle with that, especially being from Texas. But the facts are this. You have really got the word out there because YouTube is such a wonderful instrument to get information out to the world and the public and everyone that's into Vedic astrology basically knows who you are. And like I say, this was such an, this is such an honor for me to have you here today. And you've become a dear friend of mine. Um, we yeah. have so much in common with our love for Vedic astrology and all of our friends and people in our families have come together. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. So uh, let me just say, I appreciate you and I honor you. Oh, thank you. And thank you so much for talking with me today. So I want to let yes. everyone know also that we have a conference coming up. I took it upon myself to have a Vedic astrology conference so that we could come together and meet everyone that wants to learn Vedic astrology, all the students and teachers. To me, it's so important to come together in person because, you know, we can really feel the energy from each other, you know, really connect. Yep. And remember, Vedic astrology is an oral tradition. And so it's very important that we come together with our teachers in person and learn right there orally from each other. But you know, with the pandemic and everything, everything's been closed off for so long and we've had to do all the Zooms in this way of yeah. teaching. But now I've opened it up. So let me let me tell everybody that June, June 2nd through the 5th is the Vedic Astrology Conference that I'm putting on in Dallas, Texas. By the way, Dallas is easy to get to. Airlines are having their discounts right now. And but most of all, we have a star lineup of some of the most powerful teachers in Vedic astrology. There is so much to learn here at this conference, but most of all come together. And I am so excited that you are going to be one of our speakers. So I want you to tell everybody a little bit about what you're going to be talking about and, you know, just your experiences as an yeah. astrologer, everything that you want us to know. I want to hear it. So, okay. It's all yours. So so what I wanted to actually teach, um, or what I'm teaching, this is something I wish I could have, you know, um, learned 15 years ago. Because especially with what I'm teaching, it is Nandi Nadi. Okay. It is a Nadi astrology. And if somebody who does not know astrology, okay, and they were to, let's say, learn this subject before Vedic astrology or Jaimani astrology or KP. They would understand this essence of astrology. Kind of like when I started learning this, because I heard about the this Brigu Nandi Nadi two years ago, four years, five years ago, actually. And I wasn't just into it because it just didn't click. But for last year, you know, since last year, when I just came across this one individual, Hamraj, and then I understood this one point of his, you know, it's like kind of like how sages in India, like for example, Ramakrishna, he got enlightened by looking at the birds going on a cloudy sky. He was enlightened. He fell down and he became enlightened. It's these one of these sparks where just one information kind of like 
just put this blossom of lotus on top of my head, like a thousand petal lotus of Kundalini. It just opened and I'm like, wait a second. If this is this, then this is that. This is that. This. It's kind of like, you know, like a coder uh, working for the government has been looking for 15 years, but then suddenly they're just thinking about something else. And through that something else, they figure out like, oh my God, mm -hmm. they figure everything out. Mm -hmm. they, the entire code is solved within like, 30 seconds. This is what the Nandi Nadi is. Like once you understand how the essence of this Nandi Nadi works, you can literally see a chart within 30 seconds, you know what's happening. And not even 30. Actually, if you keep, if you, let's say you're an astrologer, been doing readings. As soon as you see a chart within five seconds, you should know something pinpointed about somebody's horoscope. So because the Nandi Nadi works on this concept of uh, cardinal cross. So for example, you know, in Vedic astrology, we have Mars that has the fourth aspect, seventh aspect, eighth aspect. We use that. Wow. So in Nandi Nadi, what it says, if let's say Mars is in Aries, okay? And then you have Jupiter in sign of Leo. You've got Ketu Sun in the sign of Sagittarius. What is happening is Aries is which direction? East, right? So you have East direction. So now imagine all these planets are in one section of the sky. They're in the East direction. So what does it show? It shows a group. The group has been formed because of them being in the same directional sign, even though they're far apart, even though Mars is not looking at Leo, Sun is not looking at Aries or uh, Leo from Sagittarius, but because they're in the same direction, they are pretty much like conjunct. So for example, if let's say you did have Mars in Aries and Jupiter in Leo and Sun Ketu in Sagittarius, this can be actually a yoga or combination for somebody to become a surgeon because Sun represents medical field. Ketu is cuts. Mm -hmm. Mars is cuts and dealing with sharp objects and Jupiter is Jiva Atma, Jiva Karka and biology. So that means this person's life is going to be influenced by dealing with technical tools and skills that can cut through things. This can even be a chart of somebody, especially if let's say Saturn is placed in a certain position, could be working for the government and especially could be, let's say, a soldier or fighter. You know, so you can see that, especially, and, and of course, other planets you will see. So what happens with this is that you can clearly see what is happening. So even if, let's say, Jupiter is in Leo, and we know Mars and Ketu are in Aries and Sagittarius, we know at the age of uh, five and nine, this person will have some major cut and bruises where they will need stitches, stitches on them. And especially, wow. you will also see with this individual is that they will... They, they will have a very pious father. Father himself would be a technical individual. And this is just from this trinal, uh, you know, conjunction. So like, for example, I see charts and, and let's say you have Jupiter and Saturn. Okay, so Jupiter, let's say, is in Taurus. Saturn is in Virgo. This is now what's happening. Taurus is a north direction sign. Okay. So that means now Saturn and Jupiter are in the exact same direction. They're conjunct. This is known as Mahabhagya Yoga, or this can be even known as uh, Guru Karma Yoga, meaning a person will at one point teach. This is actually a great uh, alignment for somebody to find huge success in their career because a planet of prosperity and which is you see Jupiter in Nadi is the individual. Like as much as we look at ascendant, ascendant lord, sun sign, moon sign. We have to look at Jupiter because this is the individual. This is what you are. See, all the other planets kind of become the limb of Jupiter. So moon becomes the mind, the mother of Jupiter. Okay. Sun becomes the soul and the father of Jupiter. Venus becomes the money and the spouse of Jupiter, especially in a male's chart. So everything else is a limb. So first you go to that source, which is Jupiter. So this is why when Jupiter and profession are conjunct, it shows that th this is a particular combination of a person who will rise to the highest of places. Like especially even you will see Mars, Ketu, 
let's say Mars Ketu are together. Saturn is trying from it or Saturn is, let's say, even next house to Mars and Ketu. This person is eventually going to find their success when they go work in places and high, like high altitudes. Meaning if let's say, for example, uh, I'm in Texas, let's say somebody gets a job in Colorado, high altitude. They go and work there for a tech company. Doesn't have to be in some mountain. They could be working for a tech company engineer, but they will find their most success because Ketu represents heights, okay? And Mars represents hills. Saturn is profession. So in this way, you can literally see that, okay, you want success in your profession. You go to a place which is up high on a hill. Go find, uh, go find a job which is on a higher altitude than where you are right now. And especially if that particular workplace has a flag on top, you will see your self rising in that particular place. So this is this is this is like a small little concepts of Nandi Nadi. Like yeah. you can even go, for example, uh, Moon Venus combination can cause Kapat Yoga. One can get a lot of blames on themselves. One uh, with uh, Moon Venus can definitely bring in tremendous wealth. But then it can also that increase the desire to gain something through unusual means. Unless, of course, there's a blessing of Jupiter there, you know. So because of the story of Moon and Venus, you see that like Moon Mercury, you will see this person can do wholesale businesses, but they will also be cheated in business. A lot of people will come and take cheat them in business. These are the small things you can do. And look, I'm not even looking at a chart. Wow. If I knew you had Mercury and Venus uh, or, or Moon Venus together, I know exactly when this karma can happen for you just by seeing the transits. So even the Dasha may not be required. If you have a negative experience, you can see when the Saturn, Jupiter, especially uh, Rahu's transit on this can bring about like one could be scammed. Like, for example, a lot of crypto, like, like I even saw, I did reading for somebody who was scammed with crypto. I think this was last year and they had moon Venus a trine for, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, moon Mercury trine from each other. Okay. And then Saturn and Rahu were also impacting these two planets. So I'm like, of course, that karma played out because they were trying, they weren't conjunct, but guess what? And Nadi, because they're in trine, they are conjunct. So that karma played out because Saturn is karma and Rahu represents time. The time of that karma came alive. So it's simple like that. Like even uh, in Nadi, I had I did a reading last year. This person got a reading twice. First, they had an issue with their father uh, being in prison somewhere and they wanted to know when this father will come back home. Actually, no, not in prison. They were, um, uh, they were in a foreign country Okay, and they had some major legal issue. And they're like, when will my father come back home from this? So I'm like, okay, with Dasha and all that, yes, I can do that. But all this, the simplest trick that I did, the, this person was a, I believe, Sagittarius or Gemini ascendant. Mm -hmm. All I looked is when is Jupiter, I, I, I don't know if it was Jupiter, I, I, it was Jupiter, Sagittarius ascendant, when Jupiter, and the fourth Lord, which is Mercury, are going to meet. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Jupiter is the Lagna, the Ascendant. Okay. And that's the individual. Fourth house is Mercury. They're home. Okay. When these two planets meet by uh, in the sky through either conjunction, they're coming together. So what is happening? The individual is coming to their home. Uh -huh. Just by that one little thing. And I use the Paryantra Dasha. And that was actually the Paryantra Dasha of Mercury operating. I'm like, okay, within, I believe I said November 18th to November 23rd, something. I don't know. I even deleted the, the email's gone. But between that period, they will come back and they will came back. So now you got like two, three other readings. Okay, what will happen now with the Corcus? What will happen now with that? But it was just beautiful to use just these simple, it's like a, it's like a Picasso painting like techniques. Mm. Like you can just let your mind go off and you can create your own combinations. You can create your own yogas once you know this simple Nandinari. So this is what I'm going to be kind of showing. 
So it's kind of like you're using the transits with the main features of their birth chart. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's mainly transit oriented. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you, as you said, this that, is like astrology on a go. Like yeah. if somebody is like there, Hey, I'm having this issue. This is my ascendant. This is, this is happening. When will I find a solution? So, and you don't have time. You can look at the Yogini Dasha or Chara Dasha or Vimshotri. You can simply know, okay, this person has this combination. For example, Ketu is looking at son. Father will have some kind of a legal issue come about. Okay, the yoga is there. It's happening. Now, yeah. when will this resolve? Ketu represents endings. So you can see, is Ketu transiting in a certain place with Saturn, the planet of karma? Okay, it can happen during this time. You can at least give them a, uh, you know, uh, a ballpark picture of mm -hmm. when can things happen. So it just, it becomes a very simple way to fall in love with astrology. Yeah, I get yeah. it. So it's kind of like if Mars and Saturn, uh, correct me if I'm right, Mars and Saturn are conjoined in the sky, then it would affect everybody according to what houses their Mars and Saturn rule in their chart. Is that about that? It? And also where their Mars and Saturn are from Jupiter itself, because Jupiter is the Jiva Atma. Meaning the the soul the the actual living individual of the chart, you know. So, for example, if Mars and Saturn are conjoined together, tenth from Jupiter, in a certain sign, you can see. Let's say in Virgo, they were conjoined. You can see that in their workplace, they're gonna have a major conflict. Yes. Now, okay. if Jupiter, and especially, you see, people think Jupiter is a very positive planet. Yes, it is. But see, Jupiter is a spark of Jiva, spark of life. Its job is to just give spark to something. Yeah. It's like this cell phone having the cord go in and it becomes a light. So now if let's say you had this conjunction or let's say you even have Mars and Saturn conjunct in the 10th house in Virgo, which is a sign of conflict, Jupiter begins aspecting it. Now it's a positive aspect, but also what is it doing? It's activating the current, giving current to Mars and Saturn. Conflicts at work, mm -hmm. fights at work. This person will have fight with their boss and they will cut their, see Mars is cut. So they will leave their job because of that boss and then they'll go for a different position. So yeah, positive thing could be they can find a better position, better money. But guess what? Jupiter did its trick of what it's supposed to do. I get it. I yeah. know so, that. And like you say, it's so simple. Uh, yeah. People can do this without stressing over all the doshas, the you know birth chart. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. I love simple. I mean, so this is why this is why I fell in love with it because I'm like, wait a second. If if I learned this, the the very first thing if I learned the Nandi Nadi, mm -hmm. I think I it would have made me fall in love even more. But that's a good thing because yeah. you know at one point in your profession you just feel like okay, you're, you're redundantly doing things, right. you know, and then you're looking for that spark. You're looking for something to just study again and then learn again and so this thing just came right on time where i'm just like completely engrossed in it like i'm just like here sitting here after reading and i'm just thinking okay so ketu is ladder so ketu represents ladder and nadi and i'm looking at saturn saturn is profession so you can literally see that a person cannot go from point a to point z like for, if they think that they can go from bottom to top in an instant that will not work because if Skatu is ladder, Saturn is profession, you have to take one step to go to the top, right? So this person has to take small steps to get go get to the top. Right. Even if even if Jupiter Ketu conjunction, a well, person cannot find enlightenment right away. They have to take small steps to their spiritual growth. Exactly. So you see things like this, just you're just sitting there and you're just like thinking and you're like, then you open up a chart of somebody that you have saved and then you're looking at the chart and you're so this is now has become, you know, this activator and motivator for me. Like, OK, I can now make a new painting because yeah. I've been making that same painting over and over, recoloring it. Right. And you just get kind of stale and bored with it. And oh. so now it's like a whole new canvas. I, I love when I learn new tools and techniques. Yeah. So much fun and exciting because then, you know, even though you're we're all going to do astrology our own way, we've got these backup systems now yeah. that kind of validate what we've already seen in a chart. And you know, it's going to happen when you have all these backup systems and you can yeah. see 
from, you know, maybe you're using Parashra, uh, Jaimini, and then you add this naughty technique. It's like yes. amazing. And you know what? It's not even like it's confusing. Like, okay, what if I use uh, na naughty with Jaimini with Parashri? Well, guess what? No matter what, you can even use Western astrology and they all should come to the similar conclusion. Exactly. That's the thing. So what it does, it just extra way of confirming what is to happen. Confirming. That's all I it is. Seeing it. I love yeah. this. So this is this is a new technique. Now I want to ask you something. I'm sure some people are wondering. Um, when we talk about the naughty palm re readers, do they have anything to do with the naughty astrology that you're talking about? No, no, no. The naughty palm reader, what they do, they will ask you certain questions. Right. What's your favorite color? Right. What is the name of your person? And then what, from all that information, they will go in the back where all yeah. these records are there. Right. And based on those questions they ask you, yeah, as much silly as they sound, based on that, they will pull out a leaf that will have written something about you. Right. And remember, there are six, seven billion people, right? But there's only, let's say, maybe 100,000 naughty leaves. Oh, really? So what happens is not everybody's destined to get that. Only a certain select souls who are destined to get a naughty reading, they will go there. Otherwise, you can go there to the same area where somebody got an authentic reading and you'll never find that place. Your your brain will keep skipping that door and be like, okay. And then you might go to a wrong door, which could be just, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you go fooling people to make money? Because there are those places as well. So, yeah, with Nadi, it's definitely there, but it's just that. Yeah, are your karma is going to allow you to get that okay. reading? Okay. Yeah. Cuz I know a lot of people know about the naughty palm readers and I just wondered if you could explain if that has anything to do with your type of astrology. And and uh, well so as far as I know no this is this is uh just another branch of, you know, Jyotish and yeah. Vedic astrology, you know. Yeah. But these are classical. These are like probably even I think this is even older than Parashri. Okay. Because in this system, you don't even use dasha, dashas. Yes. You don't even use moon sign or the ascendant. So some actual authentic Nadi astrologers, they do not even use your moon chart or your ascendant. They simply take the Jupiter and they go from there. Now you must be thinking, well, I can find 10 people on that day born with a similar chart. Mm -hmm. How can that be different? Well, how many people do you think are getting in getting a surgery right now in US? Yeah. Probably around a million, two million people, let's say, are in hospital getting a surgery. So don't you think they all have similar combinations to get a surgery? Like yesterday, actually two days ago, I had three people get a relationship reading from me, born in the same year, same month, just three days apart from each mm -hmm. other. I even wrote it down. I can even like, if I, I actually sent it three days ago, so I should have the record. And I will even send you that. This is what I was telling them. It was right. like a January birth and just three days apart from each other, getting a relationship. Oh, yeah. So I'm forget even the exact same time. Th there's something in the chart in transit because their dasha will be completely different. Right. But because of the transit, I clearly saw why their Venus was being hit by Jupiter. Right. So, oh yeah. You know that this is this is. I'm like, okay, this is strange. Like one one is Tamil Nadu, one was in Canada, the other one was in Europe somewhere. No, so I three different people are on three different continents mm -hmm. getting a reading within exact same day because I saw the reading after 28 days, so I saw it the same day. It's true, but it was just different days of birth. So this, this so when you can't even make an argument like. Oh, well, at the time of birth is not accurate. No, no. People who are no astrology, they, they don't even need that. Sometimes, like, for example, even if uh, right. you do a face reading, you can see, like, especially somebody has a prominent nose, their Jupiter is strong. Mm -hmm. Somebody has a prominent chin, their Venus is strong. Right. You know, or if, if like their eyes, through their eyes, you can see their sun and moon. You can even yeah. see if they would have some psychological issues with their eyes. So also when, for, when you get to a certain level, uh, some people, I, I'm not even into that face reading, so I don't really care for that. But some people are just looking at your right. chart like, oh, yeah, your Venus is weak. So your marriage is going to be like this or your Mars and Venus are like that. So it's all there. It it's is not all even, there. 
I mean, yeah. everything matters. I mean, people read your palm, they read your feet, they read your face and your ears. I mean, everything has meaning and purpose. And I love what you're saying about the, you know, the trends for each day when you do readings. I always yeah. notice there's a trend for that entire day, such as I'll notice like three people in a row have Mars and Saturn conjunct, or I'll have three people in a row that are born the same year, or I'll yeah. have three, sometimes four people in a row that have, you know, born the same birthday, believe it or not, or, you know, within a week. Uh, yes, that. I've had like, that. But it's like they, all three of them got a relationship. It's not like they got a career reading. Right. One is getting married exactly. or something. No, it was exactly. just relationship reading all three of them. All of them want to know about relationships. Yeah. And I hope they watch it and comment on it because I just gave them a reading all three of them like four or five days ago. It's amazing. So, or or yeah. the whole day you have career people or the whole day you have yeah. the same issue, whatever it is. So there is no such thing as queer. And one of the things you will also see, usually the people who are getting a reading will always reach some maturity of a planet. You'll yeah. see people getting a reading at the age of 32, yeah. 36, 25, 18. Sure. Okay. 20, uh, 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 what is that? Uh, 42. 42. Whenever there's a maturation is happening, they, they suddenly want to get an astrological reading. Majority yeah. of them will be around those ages. Or when they're just changing a dasha. I've noticed that. Changing That's up not the body, But I've noticed that a ton, right? Because they know something's up, something's changing, and they say, "Hey, I." Got or when Ketu goes over there, Jupiter, they oh, will yeah. get astrological reading. Oh, sure, that's very yeah. enlightening. Sure. So, so these are the things you just notice, and that's the thing. Like the more you do readings, the more that that's those are astrologers that will always be ahead. Like because right. you're every day you're like just seeing charts, seeing charts, seeing charts. Right. So, well, yeah. I always tell my students, every chart you do, you learn something new. Isn't it true? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there's always going to be a different combination. Unless you get lucky like me, you get a people born in the similar days and just <laughs> it's the same thing. And so, I, yeah, so, <laughs> you know, funny. those things happen. Yeah. Well, Kapil, you are so enlightening and I'm wanting to learn more from you about this naughty astrology. So yeah. Wait for you to do this. Class. Yeah, I can't wait either. Love it. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to see many of the people that I know. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, yeah, come meet me. We'll Good. talk. Yeah. Good. And here's what you know more than anything, but you learn a lot more in between classes, like when we go to lunch or when we go out and have a drink or something. Yes. The actually funny enough, that's where I learned. Like, and it's, and, and you know, my only official teacher in astrology that has ever been is Mark Boney, wow. who's coming. Who's so, coming? Because I've taken all the Germany courses from him, yoga courses from him. So he was like the official teacher that I've learned under what I've learned from many, many teachers. There's like yeah. multiplicity there. Yeah. yeah. So we do so, yeah. have the all-star team here teaching here in Dallas. And I think it's going to be so much fun. Most of all, I just really like talking to people and that's how I learn, you know, outside of classes and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's, that's the main reason why I wanted to have a conference so we could all really come together physically and, you know, learn from each other. And yep. it's not only astrology, we learn a lot of spirituality and truth, just, you know, looking at our lives and what we've gone. Yeah. Through. It's amazing. So Absolutely. is there any last things you want to tell people about that you've been up to these days? Kapil? Um, well, no, I'm well, currently, I'm actually just working on my course of Nadi. But it is going to take time because I want to prepare it in a way where people just get it. So it takes time. And then, of course, when you have readings, you have all these other things, family life, it just becomes it, it becomes a slow process. But, yeah, it's getting there. But, you know, I'm just excited to be there on at the conference and see, the, see everybody there. Okay, thank you. And once again, it's so nice to talk with you and reconnect with you after all these years. This is going to be great. So let me remind everybody, the conference is June 2nd through the 5th in Dallas. And by the way, it's going to be at the Anatole Hotel, which is a five-star hotel. It's a resort. It's amazing. And the rooftop restaurant overlooks all of Dallas. We're all going to gather there for lunch, dinner, um, drinks, whatever. So Hey, you read my mind. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And um, yeah. 
Yeah. Is there anything else I need to say? Yeah. Just, just uh, pack your bags, come and meet us. Yes. We'll we will see, see you all you. there. Oh, by the way, the aspects on that day. I love the aspects. I chose this day astrologically because when we open on Friday, Venus is going to be in Cancer and, and the Moon is going to be in Libra. So they exchange. Then oh, the exchange. next day, Mars is debilitated in Cancer, but the Moon's going to be in Scorpio and they exchange that day. So throughout this whole <laughs> conference, we have these beautiful yeah. astrological alignments that That's great. And Mercury is going to come together with Uranus, the planet okay. of astrology with the planet of the thinking mind. So I thought, what a perfect time to have an astrology conference. So hey, that's definitely going to help us teachers yeah. too. And one more thing, I call it future of astrology. So it's futureofastrology.com. But I do believe with my whole heart and soul, this is the future of astrology, all of where we're taking this. So come join yeah. this monumental event and be part of everything we're doing. So thank you, Kapil. Thank you so much. Knowledge and everything. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.